Okay, you want me to start uh, with the introduction, even though we've already done that? Sure, why not? Okay, we'll do it again while he's here. Okay. I'm talking with writer-producer Gene Roddenberry at his house in Carlsbad, California. Who were your favorite childhood heroes? Well, there was the usual collection. As a, as a small child, my heroes were likely to be muscular people of daring do and great bravery and great courage, physical bravery and courage. Uh, as, I, as I grew older, they, uh, there were other things that I considered brave too, to stand up for ideas and, and that sort of thing. But uh, I, had a, I had a succession of heroes all through my life from, from novels and from literature. What do you remember most about your childhood? I remember from my childhood that I was a loner. I don't know that that's necessarily the best thing to want a person's child to be, but uh, circumstances made me a loner. I think the circumstances of, uh, of having disabilities as a young child, which I later conquered and grew out of, also, I think that one thing that made me a loner was the fact that uh, in teaching me to read, Mother, uh, without knowing it, uh, had me skip grades because reading is often what a teacher judges on, on what, what grade a child should be in. And so I was always a year or two younger than my classmates. And that's very difficult for a child. I imagine it's just as difficult for a girl with the groin of breasts and all of that. Uh, with a boy, it is certainly difficult because your musculature is not up to the rest of the boys and you, you cannot climb a rope hand over hand like guys a year later can do. And, uh, and this, uh, this stunts your social development and you're, and you're scoffed at a lot. Children are cruel. Uh, they're, they're little animals, healthy little animals. They're as cruel as your puppies are to each other. And, uh, and, they, and I, I often heard, Gene can't do this. Oh, well, don't let Gene pitch. He, he can't throw the ball that far. And uh, 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 difficult times. What is your happiest childhood memory? My happiest childhood memories are usually things of the mind. That's for actually childhood uh, discoveries of, uh, of books, of characters, of, uh, um, in fact, yes, I, uh, tumbling through my mind now are all sorts of discover discoveries of characters and fictional heroes and so on. Uh, later on, uh, my, my happy moments became more real things. Uh, as a very young man, my Happy moments are associated with things like the day I, I got to solo a Porterfield 65 horsepower airplane. And the first time I dared to go up and loop a loop. And, uh, and, and as is happening to my 14 year old son now, uh, uh, memories of certain girls I met. What was your most important school accomplishment? School accomplishment. As far as school accomplishments, I had no particular accomplishments in elementary school. In high school, as the years went by and, and the, the year or year and a half discrepancy in ages uh, became s smaller physically, why I, I did have some accomplishments and did, uh, did make close friends and remember being president of the Spanish club and, and the Junto club. Uh, I had more accomplishments, I think, in college because the difference in physical age became even slimmer. And uh, uh, I joined the swimming team and uh, uh, I be led a more normal life, a, a more social life. I'd like to discuss a few things I'd like to my children to remember, advice mm. for them, affection being one of them. I, Don't be my afraid next of question affection. coming up is I was getting ready to ask you okay. about the environment in your family. Uh, what kind of and then I'd like to... But we can also do that at the end, too. Or we can...
can cut it into the end. Or we can cut it into the end. Okay. That was my next question out of my mouth. And I'd like to tell them to be their own person. Mm-hmm. That's, that's good. Yeah. Don't be afraid of having their own opin opinions, even though they're different from other people's. We we are we're a strange combination. We we are we're about uh, half animal, and we're about half God, is in my opinion. And we humans, uh, we must uh, we must uh, also massage our animal part, and the animal part does require touching and and affection and and these things. I remember I wrote something once about. Uh, 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 the fact that uh, the human being has got his toes in, in the mud and, and his heart and soul high in the heavens, but that the mud is important. It is the mud between our toes that allows us to dance, uh, and we must be all of those things. And so I, I think we've got to massage uh, all of the parts of ourselves. What did you want to be when you were growing up? I wanted to be an airline pilot. That was uh, from the first time I looked at an airplane in the sky. Uh, I was fascinated by them. I built model airplanes as a kid. I studied them. Uh, I joined a club uh, uh, where, in which we used to pretend that we were flying radio beams with blindfolded and with a pencil. And one fellow on one side we were going da 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 da, and the other side we were going da dit da dit, which is the way the old beams worked. Uh, I got into the CPT, civilian pilot training, which the government was doing before the war, realizing that probably we would go to war and need pilots. And uh, I got my private license through CPT, my advanced uh, license, acrobatics, and so on. And uh, I've never had a happier day in my life than when uh, uh, I, I, I joined the Air Corps before the war, before World War II, but was not called in until the Japanese uh, bombed Pearl Harbor. And then on the 18th of December, 1941, why I was shipped off to Texas to begin my flight training. And uh, uh, as, as a... <laughs> as a devoted hater of war, I'm sorry to say that the happiest day in my life was when I found myself shipped off to war to, to become a pilot. That's all I ever wanted to do in those days. Uh, then when war was over and I became a pilot for Pan American World Airways and uh, flying was uh, a little more sedate and you didn't exactly buzz cows as you in a in a Pan American Clipper, uh, then I began to sour a bit on it and then realized that what I had let myself into was to become an international bus driver. And there's not a lot of intellectual excitement in flying an airplane. Once you've learned all of your altitudes and all of your rules and regulations, you, you generally you sit there strapped to a seat uh, with the airplane on autopilot, wishing you could go back and talk to a passenger. When I quit, I quit Pan American because I, I decided I didn't want to be an international bus driver. And the, the thing I decided I would try is writing. Everyone considers themselves a would-be writer. And uh, in this case, I happened to make it. I didn't go directly to writing. I, a friend of mine, an, a writer who had written some novels, said to me, you don't know enough about life, really, to be a writer about Gene. You've seen the... Pan American has shown you the world in some depth, but how do you know how it is on the streets and how, how people under pressure uh, and, and, and bad circumstances really act? So I joined the Los Angeles Police Department because he said, become a reporter or a cop to learn these things. And it was I didn't know how to become a reporter. To be a cop, I paid $2. I took the exam. And I'll never regret those five and a half years I spent on the police department because uh, you, you do see a lot of life. I began writing uh, first uh, stories for Dragnet since I was on the police department. I learned that uh, uh, Jack Webb would pay $100 for a story that he could make into a script. Well, having 
be studying writing as I was doing, I saw why a lot of these stories that my friends on the department sold or wanted to sell weren't being sold. I said to them, why not bring your stories to me and uh, tell them to me and then I will write them up in such a fact that they have the ingredients that a television show needs and we'll split the money. And indeed, for a long time, I, uh, I made what seemed to me incredible amounts of money, sometimes a couple hundred dollars a week, uh, uh, sharing the, the story credits, uh, the sharing of the money with my friends. And then at, at last I tried for a writing assignment, did only so-so on the first. The second one got better. After I'd written about my fourth, I remember seeing a memo from the head of the studio, which was Ziv Studios at the time. Uh, we want to put some money into Roddenberry's story because we think it'll make a, a good film. And, uh, and from then on, uh, fortunately, I kept improving. And I became known as a, uh, uh, one of the better freelance writers around the country. And uh, I began making more money, getting more credits, and uh, good days. I ended up, finally, the end of that run was, uh, I was head writer for Have Gun, Will Travel. From there on, I ran on to writing some pilots, which didn't sell, but I thought I saw why. And so I said to myself, if I'm going to write pilot films, and I should then be a, become a producer so I could put into them the actors I want, have them done the way I want them to be. And by good fortune, that worked too. And, uh, and as a producer, I began to acquire some, some little credit. I then produced Star Trek, which was not a hit, understand. It was, uh, in fact, it was considered something of, of a failure of its three years. But, uh, of course, in the long run, it didn't turn out to be. And uh, I should say to my children another thing. Uh, the people talk about, talk about stick to uh, actually cultivate stubbornness. Screw them, I'll stick with it. And uh, that will get you uh, a long way on a lot of things, too. What are some of your favorite stories that you've written? What I like about writing is, and that's particularly come true with Star Trek, is uh, you're able to say to the world the things you believe and feel strongly about. And I think everyone believes and feels strongly about things. Most people uh, can only talk about it to their friends or their golf club or uh, to their buddies uh, at work or their friends, their women friends. Uh, as a writer, uh, you can look at the whole world and say, I think I'll comment on selfishness, or I think I'll comment on greed, or I think I'll comment on, on any subject. Uh, uh, in Star Trek, I was able to comment on diversity, the beauty of diversity, the fact the world has so many diverse elements and we, sh we, should be, uh, we should be pleased that the world has diversity rather than longing that everything be the same. And uh, uh, so the, the joy of, oh, I was leading to the fact that what I believe art is, is comment. Whether you work in marble and stone or, or painting on a canvas or music or what, the whole point of art is you comment on a certain thing. When Rembrandt did a painting, he was saying, this is how I see this fields and these flowers and so on. And, uh, and each, each painter in a different way. Uh, some commented on the riots of color that there is in the world. Some saw the world as uh, geometric shapes. Uh, all of it is comment. Uh, there's Great art is not made just by beauty and detail. It is, it is what you're saying. And of course, uh, my writing, and particularly writing in the field of words, it, it gives you great opportunity. I, I have some things I'm happy about. When we started Star Trek, uh, 
we had a script come in about a monster. It was our first BEM, Bug-Eyed Monster. And I remember saying to the writer, uh, let's not do it that way. Let's, uh, let's show that even monsters have their point of view. And we wrote a show about uh, some miners on a planet that were being killed by, uh, uh, in their underground where they, where they were digging for a certain precious substance. And in, in these underground tunnels that they were digging, they found a lot of round black objects. Well, the point of the story were these were the eggs of something that lived underground, and the reason they were killing the miner, the miners, was to protect their eggs and their young. And uh, this was a happy thought because it set the tone for all of Star Trek. Even when we talk about villains, we try to see it a little bit from their point of view too. We had a very ugly villains called the Klingons, but uh, we also wrote. Uh, the Klingon, about the Klingon pride in being warriors and, and the codes that they lived by, which were different ours, diversity, but, uh, but they lived by them. And in, in that way, they were sort of noble things. So writing, writing is to get the joy of, a joy of comment. Star Trek has in many ways to me been a, uh, an advanced degree college education because being called upon in order to devise the stories to look at humankind and saying, what are we? What are we about? Uh, and you're looking for those things in the 25th century just as much as you are in the 20th. Uh, it has forced me to read and study and think. One of the happiest things that happened to me was after Star Trek was first on the air, it was considered a failure, and so I was forced to go out and lecture at colleges to pay our mortgage. But in doing that, I was able then to continue studying and for these lectures to talk about things that later became subject for later Star Trek scripts. So it has been a uh, it has been a, uh, a a course in humankind for me. Of the things I'm happiest about in my life is the fact that uh, uh, I go on learning. I am in my 60s now, and uh, uh, I, one of the joys is every day that you're finding out about something new and different. Uh, what a what an exciting world this is! I I feel sorry for people who are shrugging and saying, "Well, it's all over for me. I've done my thing." I'm still wondering, I suppose, what I'm going to be when I grow up. And I, I hope it continues that way, always. And I advised, uh, again, my children to cultivate this uh, attitude. It's just like uh, the world is an amusement part and a park, and, and uh, it continues to be that way for as long as you live. What would you like to do that you haven't done? Among the things I would like to do, I've, I've done enough things that I'm reasonably happy and I'm reasonably pleased with myself. I think Gene Roddenberry is a pretty good guy considering where he came from and, and the, uh, his, his weaknesses and other things. I, I, I think he's, uh, he's a pretty good guy. And so I'm not really burning with ambition to prove anything by doing other things. I just want new experiences. I'll tell you a story about uh, uh, it, there, there are some things that happen to you bec when you become well known because of your writing. I carry gasoline credit cards that say E.W. Roddenberry for Eugene Wesley Roddenberry, my full name. And occasionally I'll get gas at a station, the attendant will look at the name and he'll say, oh, right, do you know Gene Roddenberry? And I will say, that is my greatest ambition to really get to know him. And uh, they'll usually say, well, if you do, say hello for me. But uh, uh, I am getting to know him, and it's fun. What are some of Gene Roddenberry's personal strong beliefs? Some of my personal beliefs revolve around the fact I consider the human race to be a child race right now. Uh, we're far from an adult race. Uh, all you have to do is pick up the morning paper and glance over the headlines to, to
to see that that's not true. But uh, but I think but I am in love. I'm in love with the human race. I, I think the human animal is is really a fine animal. This uh, this uh, combination of fur and nakedness. Uh, the, I'm, I'm, I'm really proud of them. From where they've come from, they've been an hairy ape and Australopithecus uh, uh, to what they've done now just uh, staggers me. Uh, the fact that here we are able to look back at the beginning of the universe and through our science we we have uh, echoes of the Big Bang that happened, what was it, 15 billion years ago, they say, and in which there were just there were just hydrogen molecules, which, and this great explosion happened. However, science later turns out uh, that it did happen, which released time and gravity, and all of these things, and this and everything expanded outward, complexifying. Uh, simple molecules became more and more complex molecules till it became not only our galaxy but all the galaxies, and. And in the midst of this race and this confusion has developed uh, uh, this creature who 15 billion years later is able to look back and figure out what the beginning was. Now, that, that is a hell of an uh, accomplishment for a bunch of hydrogen molecules that were let loose. What, what is behind it? I, I can only give my, my feelings are that... Uh, I, I don't. I don't. I don't believe in the the usual personal God. Uh, I do feel there is a gigantic plan afoot, probably more complex than anything you can ever get into uh, holy books, uh, and uh, and which we're not even wise enough to understand yet. But I feel that we're an important part of it. Whatever this thing is that is consciousness. Uh, is, is very much a part of it. I don't know what we're hooked to. Uh, I hope to do some writing on it someday and some speculation. But uh, I, I, th I think that we're, we are an incredible creature to, to be able to do these things 15 billion years later. And I look forward to the things that, uh, that we will be able to do later. I think that the wisdom of the plan is that, uh, that we're trapped on this little planet, this speck of dust here, and we're, uh, it's fun to watch probably what's ahead for us. I think that without a doubt we're going to leave this planet. And in fact, you can already see the beginning, the first steps of, of, trying, of beginning to leave the nest already. Uh, the moon trip and these things and the, the Mars trips that are coming up. Uh, eventually we're going to uh, move perhaps from childhood, racial childhood, into adolescence, at which point I've, I have personally no doubt that uh, we will begin to live in our solar system, all of the nine planets and, and dozens of moons of our solar system, the incredible raw material there is in this solar system, this, this, this hydrogen uh, furnace, which is the sun, to supply us all the power that uh, we need in the future. And I have no doubt that just as we, on Earth, have blazed skyways across the earth and railroad lines and highways and all of that, we will do something equivalent in this solar system. Tell us a little bit about your family. I've been very fortunate in family. Uh, I've had two marriages, both happy. In my first marriage I had uh, two lovely daughters and uh, I had the joy in that marriage of, of girls. and. Girls are such delicious, sweet-smelling, wonderful things. I, I can still remember when they would, they, they, when they would be so clean and their hair done, their starched dresses, and and how when they would uh, bend over, the dresses would come up, and that you'd see the panties, and and it, uh, they just little girls are just totally beautiful things and and I was happy and I was lucky with my girls and that they were never they were never had the problems that sometimes some people seem to have with uh, girls 
Not that my daughters didn't have their own problems of dating and so on, but uh, uh, there, w there was never a problem for their parents. And uh, I also then, in a second marriage, uh, had the, the, the joy of, uh, uh, in a later part of my life, in my 50s, of having a son. Well, just as the daughters were just a total joy, having a son is an equal, not better, but equal. Total joy, my boy, my, my, you know, the, the males uh, have a special thing about sons, and uh, I have special relationships with my sons. I didn't have my daughters, and this vice versa happened. And uh, he is today 14, beginning to go with girls, beginning to like girls, and uh, I'm I'm closer to him in this moment of his life than his mother, who has never had the urges of a, of a boy uh, with femaledom and, and the puzzlements and that sort of thing. What life are you most proud of? When I'm asked about uh, achievements that I'm proud of, uh, I don't think in terms of achievement. I. I'm most proud of the fact that uh, I live life as fully as I can. I, I do not consider Gene Roddenberry anyone special. Uh, as I do not consider Gene Roddenberry uh, uh, particularly intelligent or thoughtful or philosophical. I, I think Gene Roddenberry is a person who had the good fortune to have parents that aimed him in a certain direction, who met people during his life and read books during his life that uh, uh, helped him do things and become things that he wanted. And uh, uh, if I have any achievement, I'm proud of it. It's the achievement of, uh, of uh, being able to sit down and work and work hard. A lot of my, a lot of things people would call achievements really came out of the fact that I was handicapped during, as a child. During this time, I, I learned to concentrate completely on stories and dreams. And uh, I can work today on a script and have the room full of people. I often have a problem with friends. Uh, something will be said and it will start a train of thought in my mind. I've learned to be able to look them right in the eye and nod at all their proper team without the slightest idea of what they're talking about. And fortunately, when I see them hesitate, I'm able to pull back in my mind the memory of the last few words that was said, and then I fake it from then on. Uh, I don't want to be like that, but it's just it's just this mechanism that goes click into a daydream uh, with, without, without any warning. But uh, I make a living out of that, writing them down, and uh, and I'm not unhappy with that.